Larson here at the photo booth. Depending on how long you've been a viewer, you may or may not know that producer Greg and I started Toy Galaxy in 2015. Since then, we've done a top 10 figures of each year at the end of the year. Same rules every time. Have to have been released that year. I have to have purchased it that year. And if I didn't purchase it, it's not eligible for consideration. It's my top 10 figures of that year. We did the 2019 list on December 24th last year, and then we posted a follow-up of 11 through 20 a week later. And since then, I've been thinking every year when we do those, I put together a team shot, a yearbook photo of the 10, or like in 2018, there were 15 figures because I included all four turtles and three bounty hunters released that year. But this channel only goes back five years, and I started to wish I had pictures and lists for the years before the channel existed and going all the way back to when I started collecting. And on top of that... I'm curious if I even still own all of the figures that would make those lists from those years. So this is the first video in that series, working back a year at a time. This is the top 10 figures of 2014. Please ignore the dust. These are six-year-old figures. At number 10... At number 10 is Hasbro Marvel Legends Radioactive Man. Uh, this was part of a Target exclusive three pack with Captain America and Ms. Marvel. Delicious clear green. My love for translucent figures did not start in 2015, that's for sure. Uh, it, uh, it's a character that I don't really, I don't honestly, other than the name Radioactive Man, I can make assumptions based on that. I can't say that I actually own any comics that he's ever appeared in or knew anything about him or really care. He is what he is. Uh, awesome. At number nine, we have Mattel. This guy's so teeny tiny compared to Radioactive Man. Mattel DC Comics Multiverse Superman, the movie Superman. Pretty good Christopher Reeve likeness uh, at this scale, especially four inches, uh, and especially for 2014. Like, it's like one of the only attempts to make a Christopher Reeve uh, likeness action figure uh, in the history of action figures. And, you know, I'm usually a pretty, pretty much a sucker for uh, Superman figures anyway. So, you know, you make it a Reeve likeness uh, Superman figure, and I'm pretty much there anyway. Some complaints with this thing, but overall, I dig it. The articulation's a little weird. I don't like that he doesn't have bicep uh, uh, pivots, swivels there. Uh, and this symbol just came out weird. It's like all raised and whatever. But hey, I don't care. Uh, I dig it, and it's absolutely uh, eligible for number nine. At number eight. Another tiny figure. We got uh, Funko Super 7 Reaction Rocketeer. Again, one of the only Rocketeer figures in existence at the time. And, I mean, I, I suppose that still applies to this day. It is still one of the only Rocketeer figures in existence. Uh, you know, removable helmet. Uh, just uh, an awesome amount of detail. Like the uh, gum on his rocket pack here. You're not going to be able to see it on this. Oh, maybe you can. Tiny little piece of gum. Uh, plug in that hole. You know, he's got his little button to activate on his glove there. Uh, you know, 5 POA, it is what it is. It's a, it's a really nice piece. Uh, I don't have a lot of reaction figures, but the ones I have, I really do dig a lot. Oop. Uh, and then later, uh, I think in 2015, yeah, 2015, because we definitely have covered it on this show. It was one of the earliest videos we did. Uh, we did the... Uh, six inch figure that uh funko did anyway all right we're gonna move on this hey uh last note about this uh, awesome blister card art uh if you're into that kind of thing which i'm not so i threw it away at number seven gotta adjust here there we go at number seven is hasbro marvel legends group build a figure awesome likeness and sculpt a lot of great details on this thing. Towers over the rest of the team, as it should. Uh, even then, it was disappointing that there wasn't a little bit more paint applied to this thing. Uh, definitely something you'll see uh, if you go back and take a look at posts or reviews or anything uh, of this figure from back then. Um, but uh, it's uh, ultimately, it's just it's crazy to think about uh, how little I cared or knew about Groot prior to the movie coming out. I knew the name. I, I'd heard of him. I'd seen him in comics. I just, man, did I not care about Guardians of the Galaxy? And man, did that quickly change uh, after that movie came out. Um, it, it still blows my mind that, forget Iron Man being a, a household name or Silver Surfer or something like that. Groot and Drax and Gamora and Star-Lord are household names now. And that just blows my mind. Uh, and this figure, uh, it, this was actually a dual vote. Uh, Mrs. Toy Galaxy also loved this figure. It was technically it was her figure anyway uh, at number six gotta readjust back down at number six is uh hasbro marvel legends amazing spider-man 2 
Amazing Spider-Man. This uh an absolutely amazing version of the suit when the movie came out uh, when those commercials came out i was blown away by how you know comic accurate in quotation marks that suit was the big eyes the lines everything looked really really great it looked great on screen not my favorite movie but uh, i enjoyed it for what it was and i just loved the uh, the suit itself uh came with extra hands um i still it still bugs me this figure that uh, as much as i did like it e even on the back of the package for this figure the prototype, the the studio shot of this piece actually has raised web lines. And I think it looks better with raised web lines. I don't know why they did it. I don't know if it made it easier to fill these lines with paint as opposed to, you know, uh, trying to apply the paint on raised lines. I, I don't know what the justification was. I would love to be able to talk to somebody at Hasbro uh, about it and say, like, hey, what, you know, what, what happened there? Um, but, uh, ultimately I, I still like it. I just, I do wonder if I would have, uh, liked it more. This was my favorite Spider-Man figure and the one I would use in every uh, photo that I needed a Spider-Man for until, uh, until pizza Spider-Man came out like the next year. <laughs> At number five is Hasbro Marvel Legends, uh, Mandroid series, Captain America in his shield strike team suit. Uh, absolutely love the suit design. Uh, based on the Commander Rogers version out of the comics, which uh, was good, but this is this is great. I, I dig it a lot. Um, I never cared for that blue and white shield. Uh, forget the stealth version of it or whatever it was supposed to be, whatever the justification was. I don't care. I, I just used a, a shield that came with one of my other figures. He's a, I've never displayed him with that blue thing before. Um, and this, for me, uh, it, if you go back on my Instagram, I posted pictures of this back when it happened. Uh, for me, this was the uh, infamous error figure uh two right feet on my cap and that broke my heart because i really was looking forward to this figure a lot uh and for it to show up and have two right feet i was like i'm never gonna be able to ignore that i'm never gonna be able to let that go uh and i didn't i i messaged hasbro and i was like hey you gotta fix this you gotta make this right and they sent me a ten dollar coupon which uh, ultimately i think i redeemed for the wolverine from the juggernaut wave uh and when that figure arrived uh it was missing one of his six claws so uh what are you gonna do you know At number four is Hasbro Marvel Legends. Uh, Walgreens exclusive, Agent Venom, who is going to stand up. He's got those wonky old hip joints. Uh, this wasn't using that uh, Bucky Cap mold yet. It still had the weird ball and socket hips there that are ugh, gross. Um, this... Uh, psyched absolutely psyched for this thing when it came out i had already picked up the marvel select version and while it was really cool uh, a little too big a little uh, out of scale with the rest of my legends figures uh, it's always had that weird there's like a weird rubber torso shell here that uh, limits the sort of you know ab crunch ability of this figure but uh, and i and i wonder if they would make this you know if this figure came out today how different it would be just to uh, engineer it a little differently. I don't remember this guy being this hard to stand up, but here we are. <laughs> um, I never cared for the uh, back tentacles that he came with, uh, and the two guns, nah, not my favorite. I usually display him with this uh, gun that came with the Marvel Select version. More of a signature gun for him. Uh, it just looks better than those tiny little silver pistols. But uh, yeah, super psyched for this thing when it came out. I, in fact, they put out quite a few of these. This was one where it was like an online, you know, pre-order and then the, it hit the stores before the pre-orders got filled. Uh, and I'm pretty sure there are still Walgreens in my areas where this guy pops up from time to time. Crazy. At number three is the Hasbro Star Wars Black Series 2-pack of uh, Sh Shadow Squadron, Shadow Troopers. I don't remember what it said on the box here. But... Uh, the uh, the regular Biker Scout actually came out earlier in this uh, in 2014, and I absolutely would have included that if uh, if this two pack hadn't come out. But I was like, I'm not going to put in both Biker Scouts, and this two pack is this is two figures counting as one. So yeah, we'll get to 11 on this thing. Um, but I, I appreciate that not only did they redeco the figures for this set, but they actually redecoed that whole speeder bike, uh, which is amazing and included weapons for everybody. He's got his little pistol. He comes with two giant blasters and then his smaller blaster uh, and just gorgeous, just gorgeous, gorgeous figures. Another set that uh, I would 
still be so upset about if I hadn't been able to, to get this thing. And not, not only was I able to get it when it came out, uh, but it was one of those things where it was like on sale and then there was a coupon and I got it for like, you know, a third of what it actually cost to get it. So that was like super score and made me love this thing uh, even more than uh, I already had. At number two. Hasbro Star Wars Black Series Walgreens exclusive prototype Boba Fett. Uh, this this was this is this is the kind of figure that could have broke me as a collector. It could have made me just walk away and say, you know what, I don't uh, I don't collect new figures. I don't collect new things because I don't want to play the games. I don't want to follow. I don't want to chase. I don't want to look for. I don't want to spend my time, you know, tr trying to worry about the fact if I'm ever going to find this thing. I'm going to pay twice, three times what it's worth retail on eBay or something. But I was, uh, I was fortunate enough that I found this thing. As I recall, I want to say this was also one of those situations where the pre-order went up on Walgreens. I ordered it there. It didn't get filled. They started popping up in stores. And I was see following people on Instagram that were posting pictures of it. And I was getting all panicky, like, I'm sure it's going to show up in my area at some point. Maybe it will, maybe it won't. And then it just one day I managed to find it. And I saw it in the store once. And I bought it and I never saw it again. And I, I always think like this kind of thing. Oh, I'm not going to panic about exclusives. You know, it's on pre-order, but something always happens. Pre-orders get canceled. Figures don't hit my area or something. And this one, uh, I just, you know, it's Boba Fett. It's, it's a, I thought for sure they were going to just be pumping these things out. There was going to be tons of these on the shelves and customizers were just going to be scooping them up by the arm load and customizing them, painting them. I thought I was going to do that. Was, I'll grab like three or four of them, paint them in different colors. I'll do a vintage Kenner homage. I'll do a, you know, whatever custom version. I'll make them look like Batman or something, you know, but I, and maybe that happened, but it sure didn't happen in my area. I did. I only saw this guy once, like I said, and grabbed it because I thought I'd never see it again. And at number one, the NECA 1989 Michael Keaton Batman uh, snuck it in right at the end. My Instagram picture that I posted is posted on December 30th, 2014. It's the kind of figure that if we had had the show then, I probably would have had to push it over to the next year because we wouldn't have already done the top 10 episode. Or excuse me, we would have already done the top 10 episode uh, and I would have wanted to rank it somewhere. So I would have considered it eligible for 2015. Uh, just so much to love about it from the toy biz style retro packaging to the likeness of the figure itself. Yeah. It came with alternate hands, grapnel gun, which I couldn't find for shooting around. It's in one of my accessory bins, uh, batarang, just, you know, cloth cape. It's not wired, but still it's got the, you know, there's a lot of fabric here. It's got the, you know, points at the base of the cape, eh, maybe a little thin, especially under certain light. Might, might have been nice if it was a little heavier, and I'm afraid that it's going to, you know, collect dust. It seems to be doing all right. I've, I've kept it, you know, on a shelf uh, out of out of the elements. But uh, this was one that I absolutely had to have. Would have, would have, you know, metaphorically died as a collector if I hadn't been able to get my hands on one. And, and I'm, I can't remember if it actually was an exclusive. If I remember correctly, you could only get it through NECA's eBay store at first. Uh, but then it turned up at Toys R Us locations, and I definitely ended up seeing it in Toys R Us stores, like by the like dozens, you know, twenty twenty five on the on the pegs at, at some points. So, uh, also, I'm pretty sure this is the only figure on this list that we do actually have a video for in 2015. It's way back in the archive, obviously, but uh, we, we we did do a, a video for this. That's the top 10 figures of 2014. Hard to say if that's how I would have ranked them back in 2014, if I'd actually done a ranking back then. Scrolling back through my Instagram, at Toy Galaxy, I just, I just posted images of groups of figures that I purchased that year. Never picked an actual top 10. Total 2014 cop-out. Thanks for watching this and all of our videos. Don't forget to follow me on Instagram, at Toy Galaxy. If you're in the position to help the channel grow, please visit our Patreon at patreon.com slash toygalaxy. Thanks. Later.